lot like the timing was this morning, Brian, where it was early this morning where we had some of the strongest winds. But in our focus on the fire that's close to home, I don't want to overlook what happened in Northern California today because the glass fire is just one of them. And if you take a look at the big picture here, you see many others. In fact, the glass fire is the smallest one right there. There's the plume of smoke. Look at this one. That's the August complex. And that is a pyrocumulus cloud. You can see the white dot showing up there. I'm going to put all the labels on here. There are too many now to keep track of. Some of these are new, like the Zong. Fire. There's another one for us to get used to. That one happening just on the northern end of the Sacramento Valley just took off today. This is a classic example of what an offshore wind can do when you are looking at record dry conditions across California due to the intense warmth that we had through much of August and the intense dryness that we had when we missed out on an entire month of rain back in February. All of those things add up that a, a fairly run-of-the-mill offshore wind event today makes our skies look like this. We now have to start thinking about air quality concerns again. So here's the best we can show on a forecast for smoke, but there's a caveat to this. When you forecast for smoke, you've got to have accurate fire information. The fires are taken off too fast and behaving too erratically for these high-powered computer models to factor them in this quickly. However, there is one thing that it's been pointing to for the last 36 hours with pretty good consistency. The streamlines over the next 24 hours are going to be taking the smoke coming off the creek fire and driving that our way. So even without the glass fire or the north complex picking up today, we're going to be pulling in more smoke just from the creek fire as we get into to tomorrow morning. Now, we've already seen the air quality sensors today go down to moderate. No doubt you've seen the haze out there today. It looks bad in the sky. Right now, the air quality is just moderate. We've played this game before, right, where the way the sky looks isn't always telling you the way the air is registering, but there's a little bit of a lag to it. Tomorrow is when the lag sets in down here at the ground where we all breathe, which is why if we look at the forecast for air quality, it's likely tomorrow we'll be reading unhealthy for sensitive groups, if not higher. And smoke forecasting, again, is not an exact science, but we're doing the best that we can with as much of the information as we can gather like this. Tomorrow, start thinking ahead now. That tomorrow's not going to be a good day to be outside. And Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? We're going to have to stay on top of that each day. We're calling a moderate now because that's hopeful. But if you remember what happened with the last smoke wave, every time we had a long stretch of moderates there, it didn't necessarily have to pan out that way. Look at all the smoke from the top of the Salesforce Tower. All right, there is a heat wave going on as well. So I want to quickly give you the run through on daytime highs for tomorrow. And I want to try and call out your part of the Bay Area since this is a big issue for tomorrow. Tomorrow's numbers are going to be just a few degrees warmer than today was. That means we're going to be in the mid and upper 90s through the South Bay tomorrow with plenty of smoke likely overhead, 95 in San Jose, 92 Palo Alto. Numbers for the Far East Bay, a degree or two higher than today. So 102 Concord, 99 Livermore, 102 Walnut Creek. Uh, we take a look at the North Bay, 100 in San Rafael, 93 in San Francisco. This will be the peak of the heat. Tomorrow is the top of this heat wave. We only hit 89 in the city today. Tomorrow you cross over into the low 90s. It'll be 100 in Santa Rosa. And we'll also be doing low hundreds as you get up into the far north bay. So when does it get better? Let's look at the seven-day forecast. We already know Monday's the peak, but how fast can we start bringing the numbers down? And probably not nearly as fast as you'd like. Technically, the numbers do start coming down, but not in a meaningful way until we get to the end of this coming work week. So plan ahead now. Air quality is going downhill. Temperatures are staying high, and we've got to get through a five-day stretch here where fires will be in the headlines and air quality will likely also be the immediate concern for those of us who are stuck once again breathing unhealthy air. It's such a lousy report, I know.